Yes, yes, yes. I hope this is working. I'm setting it up and it looks like it's loading on my computer. There we go. Hi, everybody. Um, this is the first of a weekly session that I'm creating for my coaching called Ask Coach Kanye. And I'm really hoping that everybody can hear me. Um, I'm not really sure what Facebook is trying to teach me, so let's be patient. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is going well and people can hear me. If you have any questions that you wanna ask me while I'm doing this, go ahead and just type them in the comments. Um, if you have questions or comments or any of that stuff, you can just say hi to me if you want to. No big deal. Um, dude, as you can see, like I am new. This is the first one. So hopefully this will get better as we go along. And what I literally woke up this morning and I felt inspired. And I am in this journey where if I'm feeling like the universe is going, go do it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So this morning I felt like I want to go live and I want to have a sense of commitment behind it. Uh, not just to come on and babble on about things that I feel like I'm put into me, but really seeking ways to find how I can serve you and you can come on here and ask me questions. Also, you are more than welcome to email them to me so that I can reply to them next week. Um, just to get you an insight on what I coach on, it's basically clarity and mindset. So I work a lot around what is it that you want. I work around fear. I work around, you know, wanting to start over. So if any of those feel good for you, um, you can totally email me and we will work through that together. Um, I will also be, I feel hot. <laughs> I'll also be downloading this live session and post posting it on my YouTube channel and it's going to be my Monday thing that I do on my YouTube channel called as real as I can be so every Monday on there there will be this live stream where I'm replying to questions um, it's going to be as short as possible I don't like spending too much time on video I prefer doing that on a live one to one on one or group coaching situation but I want to be able to be accessible. I want people to get help. That's why I became a life coach um, to help you live authentically. That's my that's my motto. You know, people are like, "What's your motto?" And I'm like, "To always show up as myself." And what I want to do for you during the sessions, where you can come on and ask me anything, is to help you show up authentically as the full expression of yourself and always showing up as yourself. So. Full disclosure for today's live because I woke up and I said this is what I'm going to be doing and I'm sticking with it because it feels good uh, it feels pleasurable it feels like it's going to give me and you a beautiful exchange of energy the questions that I came up with are questions that people usually ask me in the sessions be it a coaching session or be it a discovery session these are questions that I get asked a lot and I'm going to replying be replying to them the way that I would usually reply to questions like this to my clients are we ready I'm ready I'm gonna take a sip of water first mm, amazing so the very first question that I get asked not the very first question but the question I chose for today's session is how do I set boundaries with my family and this question is so very important because as we are becoming more self-aware and we learn new ways of self-managing and we know what makes us tick, what makes us feel triggered, what makes us feel good, what makes us feel bad, one of the main things that we need to learn to set a clear, healthy, non-violently communicated boundaries. And those boundaries are usually very difficult to set and communicate with family. 
The reason for that is because our families have a certain set of values, certain ways in which they communicate. And when we create our own boundaries, it almost feels like, not almost, it definitely feels like we are stepping away from what is the norm. And so family members tend to feel challenged by us seeking to be more um, authentic. It almost feels like you are leaving the nest. And one of the other things that I found out that was so powerful that made me have a lot of compassion in this area was the fact that when we begin to step out and we begin to do things that are different, the people around us, family and friends, they start to feel challenged because we mirror what they might not be doing or what they might be wanting to change in their own lives. So you wanting to change your own life feels like a direct challenge to them and they want to retaliate. So the question is, how do I set clear boundaries with family? And I've, I've also been challenged in my session because I do talk a lot to women from Africa and bringing into a cultural context awareness where what I tell people from the West will not sit correctly or apply to women who are from the African background. And so there's a lot of respectability politics that go into it. There's a lot of socialization that has to do with you are the community. You leaving the community is going to break the whole thing will crumble, right? So I'm going to answer this question with that in mind, with the fact that this will not apply or sometimes cannot apply to everybody. And that's one of the things that I challenge with the mental health and the life coaching um, industry is that a lot of what we do sometimes does not translate to people who are in other parts of the world who are not raised and socialized within the Western context, right? So keeping that in mind, what I've realized that really helps when you are setting boundaries, first of all, boundaries are not for other people. Boundaries are for yourself. Boundaries are for you to heal, for you to grow. And when you are setting them with the idea that, oh, I'm setting these boundaries for those people, you've already lost, you've already missed the mark. You have to set boundaries in a way that is for you, right? And so the first thing that I would really encourage you to do is write down each and every boundary that you want to set and write down why you want to set that boundary. Why you want to set it because your why is going to be the thing. I really believe in the why. If you've seen like any of my videos, any of my posts, it's like when you know why you're doing things, when you know why you go to work, why you want to grow, why you want to heal, why you want to set boundaries, that why will keep you grounded, that why will keep you solid, right? And so when you can understand why am I doing this? So with your boundaries, write them down and then write down why you need them, why they are important to you. Before you can go and present them to other people, they need to make sense and feel good for you, right? after you do that the best way to communicate anything and i have found that in my own relationship right now and my relationships before relationships with family as well is boundaries can, are not meant to be communicated when we are fighting boundaries are not meant to be communicated when we are arguing with people and that's what we tend to do we tend to wait for shit to blow up and then we point fingers and like, i don't want you doing this anymore i don't want you doing that anymore that makes me feel better da, 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 da. when we are in that energy that is argumentative when we are in that energy that is fighting high person we are not willing to listen we are also not trying to be heard. We are only trying to combat people. So one of the things that I think you should do is to calmly wait for a moment where you can call people together, whoever it is that you need to communicate to. Sit them down and don't be like, I want to set boundaries. 
use language that people will understand use language that you think will feel good to you first of all if you say i want to i, I want to talk to you about who i'm becoming and i want to talk to you about what are some of the things that i need to make sure that i am becoming this person right for example if you are this is a journey that i'm on now right where you want to lose weight and be healthy and if I was, I'm lucky because my partner is healthy. And so this is not a boundary that I need to communicate with her. But if I was living with friends and family members who are not on the same journey, I would sit them down, we'll have tea. And I would say, so listen, I am in this journey of losing weight. And what that means is there's a lot of things that you guys will be cooking that I cannot eat. And so when it's my turn to cook, if you take turns, this is what I will be making. Feel free to eat whatever you want to eat, but just know that I will not be indulging in A, B, C, and D. Now, that conversation on your part is responsible and it is respectful, but some people might see it as you thinking that you are better than everybody, right? And so you might have people feeling offended because you've called them unhealthy. You might have people saying you are, you know, it's not going to work. Like be prepared for people to be uncomfortable. Be prepared for people to feel offended, but know that your responsibility was to communicate from a place of self love and from a place of love for those people, from a place of self care, from a place of wanting a healthy environment. And the way that they respond to that is not your responsibility. But be prepared to be combated, to be fought, and know also like a lot of people will come to me and say, But I've told people this before with boundaries you almost have to communicate them a hundred times over over and over and over again and i know it can feel frustrating and exhausting it might also feel like people don't want to listen to you but you have to figure out that you have been presenting yourself a certain way for a certain amount of time you have been telling people who you are and what you are willing to let in for so long. It's not going to take one conversation for you to then bring them along with you to your journey of becoming a new, changed, authentic, skinny, whatever person you want to become. So the best advice that I can give you with this is to be so patient with your friends and your family. We're talking about setting boundaries to be patient with them and to be tender with them and to be patient with yourself. And when you are finding yourself in those moments of, I'm so frustrated, no one is listening, I keep telling myself A, B, and C, I really want you to remember one more time, think about, I'm 36 years old, and if I was setting boundaries to people who have known me for 36 years, I have to remember that these people have been engaging and interacting with me in this way for 36 years. So it's not going to take one conversation for them to be different. So I am going to have to repeat myself over and over and over again. And that is the exact same thing when we are talking about setting boundaries. Uh, I hope that helps. I had four questions, but I wanted this to be a 30 minute goodness. So I'm going to do one more. Maybe I'll do one more because these two are kind of aligned. This one is how do I, I start things and I do not finish them. What is wrong with me? So I have a lot of people coming to my coaching or webinars or challenges or whatever I'm doing and they say I lack discipline I lack focus I don't know why I start things and I don't finish things and I start them again and I start something else confession time I used to be that exact same person and even though I am healing from that or even though I am moving away from that I still find myself in those moments of doing exactly this thing studying something and not finishing it or studying something and not seeing it through and what i realize is that you um it's it's more than just not being disciplined there is a fear 
that motivates you to not finish things off. And usually it's the fear of failing or it's the fear of succeeding. So what you can do in those moments of, I don't know what I'm not finishing, really sit down with this question, write it down. What am I afraid of? I really ask this question quite regularly. What are you afraid of? Because there's a reason you started that thing. If it's a, if you started writing a business proposal, right? If you started a YouTube channel, if you started, I feel like I'm just like listing all the things that I'm doing, but like whatever you started, there's a reason for that. You wanted something out of it. And if this is you, cause it used to be me a long time ago. And, and like I said, I'm still healing from that. I would usually stop right when I was about to release the thing, right when I was about to click send, the email is done, or I would stop writing a business plan right when I'm about to write the summary, right? And I would have to give it out. And so what I discovered was that this issue was more than just me lacking motivation or lacking discipline or lacking focus. It was that I was afraid of failing a lot of the times. I was afraid that this is not going to go anywhere. And I be, as somebody who has failed before, my ego freaks out every time I am going to put my situa myself in a situation where I might potentially fail. And so to stop that from happening, I instinctively, instantly just go, I'll do something else now. I'll come back to this. And I end up never, ever coming back from it. I procrastinate, I put it on the side, go do something else. And so it has been a real challenge. And this is what I want to challenge you to just keep doing it. Even when it feels uncomfortable, especially when it feels uncomfortable and you feel like, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. What you are experiencing is fear. And the only way that we can get through fear, the only way where we can transform sand fear is if we put ourselves in situations where we are afraid but we still go ahead and do the things that we want to do and that is what i call cultivating courage courage is not because you people are not courageous because they don't feel afraid the people who have put out their business plans the people who've started their businesses the people who have done the stuff that we want to do but we don't do because we allow fear to stop us it's not that they have not been afraid. It's been that they've felt the fear and they've done it anyway. And um, I don't know. I wanted a 30. I think I can do one more. The last one that I want to talk about real quick is how do I change my bad habits? <sighs> this one I've been working through for the past month. And honestly, what I've learned with myself and with my clients is choose one thing. One thing that you can work on for a good two months. I chose something as simple as waking up and making my bed because oh, somebody will just wake up, make my bed around two when I'm cleaning the house, when I've done everything else. But I felt like I needed to wake up and make my bed so I communicate to my mind and my body that I'm, I'm awake now. I'm not going back to bed and so in that way, every all my senses mentally emotionally everything feels like oh i am studying the day and creating that habit and sticking to it has taken me almost two and a half months i've got it down now and to a point where i'm just like if my bed is not made and i look at it i feel so uncomfortable and i have to go and make it so that's just an example of taking something small and really working towards that thing what we tend to do is to overwhelm ourselves with 10 different things. When you are trying to change 10 different habits, the overwhelm of it all, and that sense of, oh, I didn't do five of the 10, that can make us actually end up not doing anything. So I would say to work on your habits, choose one habit, stick to it for two months. Two months is like that time where you feel like, oh, this is it now, it has become, part of me like brushing my teeth it's become what i do and then you choose something else and you introduce that um yeah that's the first ask quite kanye ask coach kanye and i will be doing another one on monday i'll be doing this every single monday and if you have any questions that you want to ask me about 
anything that you think a life coach should be able to help you with, um, drop me an email or comment on this. I'll also drop it on YouTube and I will talk to you again next Monday. Have a fantastic week. Mwah.